is Anthony Bowman, and I'm going to be talking about becoming an EDM promoter. So this video is just going to be geared towards more of the basics of EDM uh, promoting and being a club promoter, event coordinator. Um, this is going to be more of an informational video rather than um, me popping bottles out of club, showing clips of that. So let's get started. Um, let's say I wrote some things down here. So uh, let's say you get started, you want to get started in the EDM entertainment business as a promoter throwing your own events and parties in your own local town and you think to yourself you know I got these really great ideas and I see what other people are doing and I could do that and I can throw my own events um, and I have all these really great ideas but I don't know a way to go about it second which is actually very important you actually have to find a venue that works good for you um, whether it's going to be for 50,000 people or a thousand people or just 100 people um, you have to know what kind of event you're trying to do and this process is actually a lot easier than most people think so there's actually a number of different ways of getting in contact with a venue owner um, or you know booking manager or whatever, or whatever it is the easiest way is just to go there in person obviously and talk to someone that works there and say hey who, who do I need to talk to to throw my own event here um, and sometimes they might be busy or they can't talk to you and maybe they'll give you an email and if they give you an email uh, contact information or whatever it is that's okay and in the email what you're gonna write is just you know let them know who you are what type of event that you're trying to do how many people you're expecting and another thing which is always great is which I personally always do is say hey look um, I've been looking around different, you know, other venues, and I think your venue is perfect for what I'm looking for, and that's a pretty good uh, way to start. If it's one of the first events you're doing, um, it's probably not a bad idea that you start in a smaller club or a lounge or like a a bar, a cool hip bar in town with a decent sized dance floor. Uh, totally fine. Everyone's got to start somewhere. So next, you got to pick a day. Um, there's no rush into anything. You want to make sure you have plenty of time to properly promote it um, and pick the right day of the week. And when picking the right day of the week, Fridays and Saturdays are usually the moneymaker nights of most nightclubs. So they're not going to be so inclined to give you those nights. Um, so be open-minded to like maybe a Tuesday or a Thursday. Those can work just as well uh, if you do it right. Um, and then Maybe later on in the you know in the future, if you prove to them that you did well, you can move on to a weekend if that's something that you want. Step three. So at this point, you have a following, and now you have a venue with an actual date. How exciting! Um, now comes the fun part. Um, the, one of the things you can do, what I personally love to do, is come up with themes. Now you don't have to do a theme. I just like to do themes because it brings in another element to the actual occasion rather than just having a, a DJ lights and sounds. So that's something that you might want to think about. Obviously, at this point, you want to have a flyer made, um, get a good graphic designer, have them do a good job. Um, you don't want to go cheap with the graphic designer. You usually get what you pay for when it comes to that type of stuff. And you, and it's so important because you really want your event to stand out among all the other ones. Okay. Part four of the video. Booking DJs, which is my favorite part. Um, now, you can contact an uh, artist agency and spend a few grand negotiating a, a deal for a headliner artist, which is awesome. Um, but when you're first starting out, you might not have the capital to do that or the investors to, to, to pull something like that off, um, which is okay. Um, and you might have to resort to booking local DJs. And booking local DJs is great. Um, you know, so a lot of times you only have to spend a couple hundred dollars on them. Um, and they have a little bit of a following, and they play the music that you really like. Uh, the one thing I will say about local DJs, though, you don't want to, you know, your sister's brother's friends uh, is a is a DJ apparently, and he says, "Hey, I'll play your event for free, man. You won't have to pay me anything. All you gotta do is book me." Uh, be uh, very careful with that because you don't want, you know, an artist to come up there and then start train wrecking, you know, during the middle of the event. So another question that people like to ask me all the time is like, how can I get a venue for free? And that's a really great question. And it depends how big the venue is. Like if it fits over a thousand people, most likely they're going to be harder for you to get it for free or cheap or something because they're going to ask you for a down payment. They're going to ask you for you know some type of deposit or flat rate. So the best way to do it is if you're first starting out and you're on a budget, um, 
you want to get a venue for free and the way to do that is well they'll keep the bar sales and you'll keep the door so you'll say hey I'll bring all the people you get all the money that's generated from the bar sales and I'll keep all the money that's generated from the door which is you know ten dollars or whatever it is that you're charging that night Another way to do it, which is actually pretty cool, is you can get a percentage of the bar um, and then have the door for free. So that way you tell everyone, hey, you know, the event's for free. Just come on by and more people will show up because it's free and you'll just collect a percentage of the bar at the end of the night. If whatever it is, if it's 15 or 20 percent, which is pretty good, actually. Um, and then you can also ask them, you know, hey, uh, I'll, I'll keep a percentage and I need about, you know, a couple of another few hundred dollars or whatever it is. Uh, for my DJ and for uh, you know a bottle or something like that. Those are two different ways to get a venue for free. So I hope you guys learned something new. And if you have any more questions, just please feel free to comment and please subscribe. Thanks.